Let's get these small compressors set up so we can do some painting. Let's go. What it do, kings and queens? It's your boy, the UP King, the people's champ. And we back with another video. And before we jump into this video and talk about setups on compressors, listen, go to www.undergroundpainking.com, grab you some merch, grab you a hat, grab you a sticker. Hey, do something and grab something that will help the channel grow so I can keep giving you guys more of this information. I'm doing this all for you. So run over there, just go, go grab you something. Now, Let's go ahead and talk about setting up these compressors and getting them ready for some paint. So what we have here is my 21 gallon central pneumatic air compressor. Let's check these specs out. 2.5 or two and a half horsepower, single stage, which is a stage one, 21 gallon, you can uh, use this on a 120 and the pressure switch is set at 125 psi now as you can see it's unplugged and i have drained the tank make sure you're draining them tanks you know they is definitely recommended that you drain them tanks get all that air and that water out and if it built up any moisture get all that out now you can see mine is being used because it's a mess, but make sure you're doing that. So first things first, we're going to get this thing cranked up. See here, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing in the tank. And that's what you want. That way we can set this thing up like we want it. So let me go ahead and get this thing running. So, we have finished airing up the tank, and I really need to set it, that's why I believe it's uh, got some air leaking, because it's not set. There you see it's around 120, and this gauge here lets you know what's actually in the tank. So, if you have a compressor like mine, then you'll have this gauge here, and this gauge here, two gauges. Again, this one lets you know how much air you actually have in the tank. This here, this gauge, regulates the air coming out of the tank. So you can regulate that how you want. So, let's go ahead and set this thing up. So you should have a knob such as this one that you can regulate as you can see I'm turning down and it's turning the air so now we have absolutely nothing coming out if you turn it the other way it'll raise the pressure so let's get that up to about We'll call that about 30 pounds. Now, most spray guns that you have are gonna operate between 10 to 30, maybe 40 pounds. That's typically what your spray gun is gonna operate at. So, you would think we are set at that 30 pounds. And you're right, we are set at that 30 pounds, but that doesn't mean that we set and ready to go. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I got my air hose connected and we are sitting at about 40 pounds, which is about where we wanna be. But how I set my compressor up is instead of that 40, 
I'm going to bump it up. You can do this if you want to. And I'm going to explain why in just a second. So we are at Let's see here. We're at about 60 pounds. And that's exactly where I want to be. I want to be at 60 pounds. Even though my gun is going to run at 30 pounds or lower, I want my compressor set at 60. All right, so we set at about 60 at the regulator. We got the gun set up here, plugged up, and we're sitting at about zero. I got it, I got the air shut completely off. Now what I'm gonna do is, I wanna run that up to the 30. Now once you open it, you see it's at the 60. Now, what you have to do is pull the trigger back and then set it. Did you watch the gauge? If you missed it, go back. I pulled that trigger back and it dropped all the way back down to zero because I haven't opened up the airflow yet. So now I can set the gun to the PSI that I want. As soon as I let that trigger go, it went right back to the 60. It's actually looking higher than the 60, ain't it? Tank is still reading 60, so that's what we're going to call it. These gauges don't always read that well. But, again, pull the trigger, back to zero. We're getting absolutely nothing out the gun. So now, that's perfect for us to set the gun. Alright, so we got the airflow cut off. We pull the trigger back, and we have absolutely nothing coming out the gun. So now this is perfect opportunity for us to set it where we want it. We open it up and I'm gonna set it at 30. So now we're set at 30 pounds. All right, now set at 60 pounds. When I pull the trigger, you'll see the gauge drop. Now, you saw the gauge drop about 10 pounds from that 60 to about 50. Now the reason for that, and the reason why I wanna set it at 60 is because I want to compensate for the air hose. I got a 50 foot air hose, which is going to make me lose about 10 pounds before I even get the airflow to my gun because I got actual air going through my air hose. So when I squeeze that trigger, Sorry about that, but when I squeeze that trigger, I want to have that 30 pound system. That's consistent airflow. You don't see the needle fluctuating, going all the way down. You don't see it going all the way up. You see it sitting right at that 30 pounds. And that's consistent. That's consistent. And that's what you want. That's how you want to set your gun. You want to give yourself a little wiggle room to accommodate for the air pressure that you would actually need. You don't have to actually spray at the 30, but that allows you to adjust up to the 30 if necessary, or you can adjust it a little bit more if your gun requires you to have even more PSI but you have to accommodate for that hose that you're using. You might have a 25 foot hose, 
50 foot holes, maybe even longer. So you have to accommodate for that so that you can have consistent airflow every single time you pull that trigger and it's not dropping on you or getting too high on you and now you're not atomizing and you got too much air and not enough fluid but you know that that'll probably be another video when we talking about setting up your spray gun all right kings and queens hopefully that video helped out and let's just do a quick recap on what i hope we learned today small compressor big compressor doesn't really matter but in this case we use our small compressor and what we want to do is get consistent airflow so we want to set our compressor up to where it gives us consistent airflow so we do that by setting the compressor and giving ourselves some wiggle room at a little bit higher psi than what's required by the actual spray gun. So if your spray gun requires about 30 pounds, set it at about 50 or 60. Then, with your spray gun hooked up to your compressor, you want to pull the trigger with your air pressure closed, then open your uh, airflow, and then set it at the desired PSI. Now that you got the desired PSI, you got consistent airflow, plus you're gonna have that wiggle room to accommodate for the length or feet of air holes that you might be using. Because in my case, I had a 50 foot air hose and my pressure dropped at about 10 pounds. So had I set right at the 30 that I needed, I pull the trigger, I'm actually only getting 20 pounds and not the full 30 pounds that I actually need. So I would have wanted to set it up just a little bit higher. So give yourself some wiggle room to play with. That way, if you need to adjust here and there, you can adjust and you have the room, but you're gonna get consistent airflow. That's what you want. No fluctuation, no dropping, not too high. You don't want any of that. When you squeeze that trigger, you want that thing to be consistent. Listen, I hope this video helps out. And if not, man, drop them comments. Drop them comments. Make sure you're hitting this like button. I'm giving you all the information you need. I'm talking about, we, we finna paint the world. We finna paint the world, baby. So listen, drop them comments. Let me know what you think about this video and the information that I'm giving you. If you like it, if you don't like it, if you got something that you do, on how you said it, let me know that too. But listen, man, enough talking. It's time to get back to work. Listen, it's your boy, the UP King, the People's Champ. And we out. I